All right, guys, we got some video here of the Gravely Mowing from Colchester, Connecticut. Some of our friends don't know how to pronounce Colchester. So before we get into the tractors, we're going to talk about how you pronounce the town where the event was. And this is how you don't pronounce it. Listen to him. So guys, on my way to Cholesbury, Connecticut. So guys, just fresh home from the Gravely Mow Inn in, uh, what was it, Cholster, Connecticut? Anyhow, the Connecticut Mow Inn of 2022. If you're looking how to pronounce this Connecticut town, it's not Cool Cheester, it's Colchester. Or if you're from Boston, it's Colchester. Uh, Cholster, Connecticut. Ta! Thanks, guys. I needed some guest appearances in my video, so thanks to Steve and thanks to Dennis for playing along. So we've been working on planning this Gravely mowing for months, and the mowing was in Connecticut a number of years ago, up at Summers, Connecticut, at the Tri-County Fairgrounds. And we wanted to bring it back to Connecticut. Thought it'd be a good place for people to come that live in New England. So it could be Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, whatever. It's kind of far for those guys to go to Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland, Indiana. So this way, you know, we could open up to a broader audience of people in the Northeast. So... We picked Zagre Farm Museum. I know you guys have seen my videos of Zagre before. It's a wonderful location. It's an up and coming mecca of tractors and engines, and I love the place. So that's where we had the mowing. We had guys come from as far as Oklahoma. We had people come from Aaron's in Brilliant, Wisconsin. We had people from West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Maine, you name it. There was people there from everywhere. It was really awesome. The weather held out pretty good. The temps were in the mid 80s. It wasn't really, you know, raining or anything. It was a little bit humid, but it was nice weather all around. We were there from Friday until Sunday afternoon. So it was a really good time. Got to hang out with a bunch of friends and tell stories about tractors and it was just great. So I'm gonna show some clips here and I hope you enjoy the clips and hopefully you can come to the mowing next year, which is probably gonna be in Pennsylvania at Rough and Tumble. Look who's laying on the ground fixing his tractor. Here at the Zagre Farm show for the Gravely Mowing at the swap meet. Dude, look at that thing. This is the general area of the show, not the mowing area. This ride here. I don't know what you call it, but it's cool. The Worthington tractor. Huh? It was running until about 10 minutes ago. That's cool. Hey, I'm, He's I'm, up I'm, here in this trailer. 16G with a plow, the mower deck, some other stuff, some mags over here. Cool. Uh, planetary gears, stuff like that. mowing footage some riders here nice 12g we 
that thing's nice. 28 Hon, shoof. I got here. A little bit of everything. Look at this beautiful 450 that came in on this trailer over here. Holy cow. That thing is awesome. Wow. That is a beautiful tractor. Look at that yellow dump cart. This is gravy too. Holy cow. That thing is beautiful. Wow. Eventually the guy with the yellow tractor won a prize at our banquet dinner and he had a prize for outstanding restoration. After talking to the guy, he rescued the tractor from a scrap yard and he restored it. He also collects Studebakers and the truck that was pulling it, the Studebaker truck. Some of you guys know that Studebaker owned Gravely at that point in time. So the real diehards want a Studebaker truck to pull their Gravely stuff. And to make things better, somehow through the conglomerate of companies they owned, Studebaker also owned Onan engines. And that's why the 450 has an Onan uh, CCKA engine on it. So it's the mecca for Studebaker people. This ride here, the Flathead V8. Wow. That's a first. Look at that dude, the dog on his back. Now I've seen everything. E-161, that's a rare machine. Some old L's, 12G, neat stuff. This is intriguing to me over here. He's got a wing mower attachment, which you pull behind your rider mower and it makes you have more cutting it's a 40 inch width. It's pretty intriguing to me. He only wants a hundred bucks for it too. What we got over here, some plows. It's a nice machine here, 5665. Stuff for sale over here, 526. Oh, you go to the flea market? Yeah, he's there early. What else we got? Away. Tarp full of stuff. Hmm. 16. 56.60 over here. It's a nice looking machine. An 8 horse over here. 52.40. Some clouds rolling in up here. Let's see, we got some stuff on this guy's trailer. It's probably three foot square cart. Yeah. Small fresh paint. Handy for, you know. Oh, yeah, handy for a lot of Let's see, we got Paul. He sells a ton of stuff over here. A lot of stuff under the tent here.
snow blowers, L's, mower deck, leaf away, plow weights, 81.22, some tires, free, look at that, anything we need in there? Hmm. Want anything for free? Of course I had to get the free stuff. Got a whole bunch of stuff there for free. How could I not take it? 8122, 8179KT, these guys from New Hampshire. I think I've seen three 8122s here today. So my buddy Ed showed up to the mow-in here and he brought one of his igno electronic ignition coils. Let's check it out. His sensor, which is very similar to mine, he filled it with epoxy in there. And uh, he's got a trigger here that he's using on the Cummish. So it's got a bracket that he made out of a piece of aluminum. But it's pretty neat. An old engine there, looks like a Gravely Sickle Bar. Up here, a John Deere engine. Cool. like a Chucky 2009 wood stove. There's trouble coming down the hill here. Whoa. I hope you liked part one of the 26th annual mowing video. Stay tuned for part two. It'll be coming back soon. Comment, like, and subscribe, baby.